I have had the opportunity to interview a lot of inspirational people on the show, and my next guest this morning, she is definitely one of them. She's a Midwest girl who packed her bag, kept her values, and headed on down to the Sunshine State. Now that move meant leaving behind her law career and starting a new journey. She is the founder and CEO of Carousing, an online lifestyle magazine. She'll tell us a little bit more about carousing this morning, but in a nutshell, it's thinking outside of the box and seeing the world a whole different way. Karina, thank you so much for being back with me this Thanks, morning. Thanks, Jenna. I'm so happy to be here again. Well, I am so happy to have you here. I had the pleasure of interviewing you last year. Now you're back down here in Key West. And you've been very busy carousing, Karina. <laughs> <laughs> I have, Jenna. My website has really taken off, and I think mm -hmm. people are really excited about it and being inspired. And my tagline is, it's my smart, sexy, spiritual exploration of life. And I really try to inspire people daily with some fun stuff. So it's been great. You definitely do that. So mission accomplished. And in a nutshell, I, I kind of told our viewers that it's thinking outside the box, seeing the world a whole different way. How else would you describe carousing? I really encourage my readers to live fearlessly. That's one of the big messages that I love to put out there. I feel like that's really an empowering way to live. And so I really do try to um, put that out there a lot. But in a nutshell, what I really write about in Krausing, it's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So I write a lot about anti-aging and beauty and wellness and health. And, and to me, I think there's so many different facets that need, to be t that need to be explored and covered. And that's what I try to do with my website. Well, you are such a great and a fun writer. And you're starting to write about practicing happiness. And happiness is a timely subject right now. And of course, it's an important subject because we all strive to be happy. Some it comes easier for, some not so much. <laughs> That's when, absolutely true. When did you start studying happiness? I bought an up band. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a, little, it's a band you wear on your wrist and it tracks your calories and your exercise. It also tracks your mood. So there's a corresponding app that you use with your smartphone and the app pops up with these smiley faces and it says, what's your mood today? And it can go from ecstatic with a big, huge smile to you know, basically down in the dumps with a big frown. Well, I was surprised how many times I had, I had to honestly answer when my up app would ask me what my mood is. Mm -hmm. I would honestly have to answer, meh, just flatline, not happy, not unhappy. Mm -hmm. and, and it started to concern me. I thought, why? I have no reason to feel meh or blah or apathetic. Why am I feeling like this? So I started to um, track my mood more, and then I started a lot of trial and error about, well, what could I do today that what might make me feel happier to get me out of meh to happy? Mm -hmm. So that's sort of was my goal in doing that. So what were some of the things that you did to get you out of that meh state? Well, I started <laughs> thinking about what is happiness, mm -hmm. right? So I really had to analyze that first. And I don't know, um, Larry David, the comedian who's involved with Seinfeld, he says that happiness is doing a job you love and having sex on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true. <laughs> but what I know the happiness is not is a lot of temporary things. It's not eating, drinking, shopping, gambling, vacationing. Those are pleasures and they're short-lived. Mm -hmm. So to me, happiness is a long-term endeavor. And it seems to me that some people are just genetically wired to be happier than other people. Mm -hmm. So I really started to think about that and I read a wonderful book, a game-changing book for me, called Before Happiness by Sean Acor. And Sean has been on Oprah Super Soul Sunday recently talking about his book. And he says that 10%, happiness is 10% the way you're wired, the way your brain is wired, and 90% of how your brain processes the world. So it got me thinking, if that's true, could I practice enough to make my brain process the world differently? So I could train my brain to be happier. Mm -hmm. So that was really my journey with that. So my theory about the practice of happiness is, is that the Founding Fathers say we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what's going on is that's a, it, it's a mistake we make to chase happiness. I've done this in my law career, right? So I, I would, um, as soon as I graduate law school, I'll be happy. As soon as I pass the bar, I'll be happy. As soon as I get my first big win, I'll be happy. 
So we all do that, don't we? Mm -hmm. all, we all chase and pursue happiness. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the mistake we make. Because then you feel like once you reach your goal, now what do I do? Well, then there's a bigger goal and a bigger goal and a bigger goal. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the mistake we make in being unhappy. So the practice of happiness is actually finding ways to practice it every day. And so just like, let's say you want to learn to paddleboard. Mm -hmm. You need to practice. Right. You want to be a better cook, you have right. to practice. Right. Practice you want to makes perfect. Yes. <laughs> you want to speak French, you have to practice, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's my whole theory about practicing happiness. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that we can practice happiness, Karina? I have found quite a few, actually. But probably the biggest one to me is gratitude. And we, I think we talked about this before when mm -hmm. I was here and how we both really enjoyed the practice of gratitude, right? Mm -hmm. it, if you're not happy with what you currently have, why would you ever be happy with more? It goes back to so the, true. Right? It goes back to the theory about chasing happiness. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big believer in keeping a gratitude journal. I love one called the five minute journal, but you can also just take out a pen and a piece of paper and write down five things you're grateful for mm -hmm. when you're feeling mad and unhappy. It's, the, it's a wonderful thing to do. It really does work wonders to write things that you're thankful for. And I also liked, Karina, you mentioned that worrying, that's not going to bring you any happiness. And y your mom was a big advocate for <laughs> don't you dare worry because what you worry for, that's going to come true. Right. Exactly. So I feel that you attract what you think about and you attract what you are. So if you're a big worry wart and everything is, uh, you're obsessed about, oh, this bad thing could happen, this bad thing could happen, you are going to attract those things. You have to be really careful about how you look at something and really analyze really what are, what's logical, what are the odds of this bad thing really happening. That's what I do to get myself out of the worry phase. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you're happier since you started learning about happiness and, and practicing ways to be happier? I am, and it's amazing <laughs> because it's really, truly scientific. I am all about the spiritual aspects of inspiration and happiness and all that, and I, and I, and I believe in all that. But when you understand how your brain works with regard to happiness, it's, it's, a, whole, it's a whole new dynamic of how to make yourself happier. So the, the thing, too, that I love, oh, how about the Pharrell Williams song? It's like a worldwide hit now. Right. Right? I think everybody wants to be happier. <laughs> but one yes. of the things he says in that song is, clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. And, and I've seen him interviewed, and he said to me, to, to Pharrell Williams, he says that is feeling fearless, mm -hmm. feeling limitless. So I find that, too, that when I practice happiness, I try to do something every day that scares me. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying like skydiving or something crazy, right. but whatever you feel is a little bit out of your comfort zone, do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, step out of that box yeah. and, and do something different. And being fearless, that again, is what carousing is all about. Karina, when will your book be released on practicing happiness? I'm hoping within the next six months. Okay, good. Well, you got to come back on the show and, and talk some more with us about happiness. I'd love to. That would be wonderful. Karina, thank you again for being back with me this morning. Welcome back to Key West. And everybody, please check out Karina's website, carousing.com. You can also find her on Facebook. It's time to start carousing. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be back after these messages. If you